Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. A few weeks ago, I did a video all about P-Bass pickups featuring an excellent and affordable P-Bass from Donner. In closing, I noted that I had a new bridge and pickup ready to be installed in this bass and many of you wanted to see an A-B comparison between the two setups. To that end, I now have the bridge and pickup installed in this bass alongside a shiny pedaloid pickguard. I'm still missing a couple of knobs at the moment because it turns out I didn't have any knobs to hand that would fit on solid shaft potentiometers, but that's just cosmetics. This is a fully operational battle station. Let me show you a little bit of the setup process and then we'll get into sounds. Let's look first at the electronics. There would be no point in putting in a high quality hand wound wizard pickup into the existing cheap wiring. So we're going to be doing a full upgrade. The pit guard, ports, tone cap, output jack and pushback cloth wiring were all very kindly supplied by algree.co.uk. They do a lot of great stuff on the site, carrying everything you need for guitar electronics, pickup parts and lots more. They even do pre-wired harnesses and kits if you aren't sure what you need to get. If you're looking for a UK based supplier of guitar electronics parts, look no further. Link is in the description. The wiring for a P-Bass couldn't be any simpler. We've got two CTS 250k audio taper potentiometers, one volume, one tone. Signal comes from the pickups into one side of the volume pot, the volume wiper connects it to the output jack and also to the tone pot which forms an RC low pass filter in conjunction with a 0.047 microfarad orange drop capacitor bleeding high frequencies to ground. The vintage style cloth wiring not only looks high quality, but it's also extremely easy to use. No stripping required, literally just push back the cloth insulation to expose the wire. The perloid pit guard itself is where the difficulty begins. This is designed to fit a standard Fender P base, but our Donner isn't a standard Fender P base. I'll need to do some slight modifications to both the pit guard and the instrument in order to get everything to fit. One issue with the new Wizard pickups is that they didn't sit high enough once installed. I had to go back in after this footage and insert additional foam risers in order to get these to the appropriate height once everything was set up. The bridge also required some modification. The bridge on the Donner was mounted using four screws, one at each corner of the base plate. This is different from the standard Fender design featured on a replacement Wilkinson bridge, which has five screws in line at the back edge of the base plate. It's also apparent that the new base plate is slightly smaller than the original. In order to get this to the right place, I had to lay out the center line of the instrument and position the bridge so that the new saddles sit in the same positions as the originals in order to retain the correct scale length and ensure the instrument will intonate correctly. So here is the completed process. Now, you might be able to see that not all of the screw holes in the pit guard have screws in them. That's largely because this pit guard has more screw holes to start with than the original did, but also because of the shape of the control cavity, several of these holes open into the void of the cavity and can't be utilized. I also had a slight issue with the bridge positioning in that when I got it fully set up and correctly intonated, a couple of these saddles are at the most forward extremes of their motion. Now, that's not going to be an issue so long as those saddles don't ever need to be intonated any further forward than this. In hindsight, really what I should have done is moved this bridge forward by a few millimetres so I could have some extra travel on those screws. Again, it's not going to be an issue right now, but it might be something I need to revisit in the future. Anyway, let's hear these before and after examples. I've got both isolated and in the mix examples to show you, and I think the differences will come across a little clearer in the mix examples as uh, the bass just seems to cut through a little bit easier there with the new setup. There's no difference in the mix, I'm simply swapping out the bass performances. <laughs>
Now, I don't know how well these differences will have translated across the production, the upload, and then the streaming quality degradation, but here's what I've experienced having used this instrument. Playing this acoustically, the strings appear to be louder with a fuller low end than before, and I think we can put that down to the new brass saddles. These are solid milled brass, unlike the cast materials of the original saddles, and this solid material and increased mass should be helping energy transfer between the strings and the body. We're getting a greater cyclical resonant interaction between the strings feeding the body and the body feeding back to the strings. Less vibrational losses to the saddles means that the strings will be able to ring out louder, longer, and thicker. We could probably increase this further by changing out that plastic nut for a denser bone or brass one, but that's a project for another time. Listening back to the amplified and recorded samples, it seems pretty clear to me that we have an increase in clarity, particularly in the mids, and a lot more fine detail with the Wizard pickups. The sound is very similar tonally, as expected, but we're getting an increase in fidelity, almost like a blanket has been lifted off of the sound. This, I think, is a large part of why the mix examples sound like the Wizard pickups have more punch and prominence to them, despite the recorded volumes being approximately equivalent. So what I've achieved is a punchier, higher fidelity sound with a fuller low end and more string volume than before without drastically changing the tonal characteristics of the instrument, which is exactly the kind of result I was looking for. This all goes to show how good quality this instrument was to begin with, that all of these changes are relatively slight. Much of the character of an instrument like this comes from the strings, the scale length, and the physical construction. The better electronics are simply affording me more resolution to hear the true sound of the instrument when amplified. From now on, this is going to be a go-to instrument for me to track bass with in the studio, and for that purpose, I doubt I'll ever need anything better than this. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. Keep it loud, and stay safe.